Hi and welcome to Job Estimator Develop using Visual C++. Okay, now let me just show you guys how this system works. There you enter your name. Let's assume the name is Paul Banks and email will be cpbanks at gmail dot com and here so he lives in number 18 Barclays Road okay so the telephone number has the phone number and date of birth okay so the amount of pipes copper pipes ordered in meters is 5 chrome 7 plastic pipe 4 and labor happens to be approximately 7 hours distance travel let's make that 9 okay so if we click on total because all of these here are labels so let's just click on total there that's what we get there is no supposing there's no discount let's take that off and you can see the difference between customer with discount and without discounts all right we also have the time the current time right there and the dates right there we have a currency converter here we can use that to carry out some conversion let's say we want to convert to this from pound to Philippines money there that's what you get and we have a calculator here to carry out any just verification that you might want and here you can always click on the receipt to get the receipt there okay so what I'll do next is uh, take you guys straight into visual C++ and uh, we start a fresh new project and you see how I've put this together so let's go into visual C++ now we'll exit now we start a new project new just click on new project and let's give this a name so I'm going to call that job underscore estimator click on OK but make sure you select Windows Forms application just click on OK and there we go guys now we have our form I will then define the size of my form let's make that approximately 1366 by let's go for maybe 700 ok just cancel that that's supposed to be 1366 by 700 there we go Oops, enter okay and let's change the back color as well let's change the back color to black come back in here just select maybe black yeah. there so I now need my tools has come to panel in the panel I need some tools okay now uh, let's use group box yeah, group box is fine we need two of those one and two I have two group box there let's change the color of this group box to control let's come back in here and just change it to control I want it to be control there and repeat exactly the same thing for the next one want you to be control right there okay that's looking good okay right underneath here let me enter the following let's go for tab control let's enter tab control there let's bring that down something about that All right, our tab control is in place, and this group box. Let's get rid of the text content in it. Delete and delete the other one as well. Yeah, that's that's looking good. And now uh, let's bring this down. Okay, and I'll need a label. 
let's get a label right here I need one label here and we change the font let's change the font of that very label to white and change the font size as well let me just change that to 12 or something right let's bring that in a little bit let's make a copy of that very label and that will be here this will be for the time and this will be for the date so let's change the names of this label to LBL date and the next one will be LBL time this very one LBL time there now to get the date and time working let's uh, I think we should add a timer let's look for a timer right there double click on that and that's our timer right there I'm, I will now double click on the timer as well and go to the well let's check out the setting of this timer first okay that's it it's 100 that is fine so let's now go to the coding area of the timer and there we go we can always enter as follows for the timer that's for the timer right there and that will be for the time now if I double click on the form double click on the form and form load in form load I can always enter that will be for the date change that to date okay so with these two lines of code this is for the date but to get the timer working I will have to initialize timer starts so let's go up there and look for where it says initialize right up somewhere here I think it's right up here yeah there we go all right so let's just enter as follow timer one okay and that will be I think that that's in capital letter and that is it so that is to trigger the timer so let's see if that will work the first thing is the bug yeah we finished debugging and it's successful so let's run the program now and see there you can see the timer right there the timer is working as expected but the date is not working let me change the date is dates okay i've reset the code for the dates that's it right there so if i run it now run i will now get, have the right date there that's today's date and the timer is working as expected the next thing is i'm going to get rid of one of these i only need just one so close that and starts with the design of the interface okay right here i need some i need text labels and text some labels here and text so let's speed that up anyway let's get a text box where is a text box there we go just gonna speed that up right this how the first group box is looking so let's take care of the second group box I might as well just copy this and just change it okay guys we finished with the design of the second group box so let's compile and run let's see how the old system will look for now yeah, it is successful so we'll run it and see there this is how it's looking right now the other inter the other interface remain is just this tab control we need to get the tab control sorted so let's close that as you can see the timer works the date is working as expected as well so let's just select this form come to the property and change the start position let's get that centered that is good so now let's come into control right here I only need one of those so let's come to tab control 
I just get rid of this, remove that, and change the other one. Change that to maybe that's that should be the reset and just click on OK. That's fine. So let's come uh, continue with the interface development for the control tab control itself. Let's speed that up too. Okay, the design of the interface is all completed as you guys can see. But if I click on any of these buttons, you you notice there's no line of code, there's nothing in there. So that's going to be the next step is just to take care of the coding. So if I run it, let's run it and see. Compile force, you can always press F7. If I run it, that's what you guys will see. What you will be able to see the rest of the buttons so I'm going to have to move those ones up so let's do something about these buttons Maybe move this up a little bit so that's how the whole system looks for now and nothing is working okay okay this is how the whole system looks like now and here I have text boxes here why here these are all labels and I also have a label here so the next thing I will do now is double click on the total and start with the coding for all of these so let's do that now stop the system from running and double click on total so we are now in total coding area right here but before I start let, let's declare the following variable right here so right underneath here take good note of it right there tab down and you declare your variables right there those are my variables those are the variables I intend to use okay this will be for the calculator this will be for the sales or the job estimator itself and here from here downwards that will be for the currency conversion now let's go to total itself so back in total procedural area let's move that up a little bit right here you can see the name is btn total i will now speed that up those are the lines of code for total itself so let me show it to you i have some local variables in there and right here i've generated random numbers that i'll be using that for the job reference and here i've assigned all of my content within the text box to this variable label label and that's a variable travel variable copper variable plastic pipe and variable chrome so all of the content in there has been assigned and this is how you assign as, far as you can see convert to integer 32 whatever is inside label should be stored in here travel stored in here and that is then multiplied by the standard price okay so whatever you enter in here will tell us in meters does it in meters is been multiplied by the standard price and stored in LB which just represent label and this is for tax that's a chrome pipe copper pipe plastic pipe now all of those stored into net total net total is then multiplied by 17.5 to get the tax and that is now the tax whatever is in here is stored in tax and that's just a pound sign and that is it stored in tax itself then the content in here is stored as subtotal right there now to get the discount working whatever the net total and the tax is is multiplied by 20 divided by 100 to give you a discount of 20 uh, percent and the final result of that is stored inside discount and is then stored discounts is minus from the total amount and stored inside this variable this variable is then stored inside total 
else if there's no discount we get the whole full price that's it right there so just show you guys the code one more time let's take it from the top there and just bring it down and that is all for total so just let's run it now compile and run as you can see it's successful so if we run it and enter whatever we intend yeah there click on total and see what we happen there that's working as expected and the system generates job id automatically so all that is left now is for us to take care of this and this but the easiest one let's take care of this one but first the receipt so back here double click on the receipt okay that's the receipt there and get that sorted so those are the lines of code for the receipt so come in here and just let's see those we add the content everything you have in the text box and the label and the label link onto the receipt that's it right there those are the lines of codes so come here build there is successful let's run it and see and supposing we enter some data in there and enter some information in here let's say the name is Sally Sally Jones and email S Jones at gmail.com address Carlton Bill. All right, telephone number date of birth. And just click on total and see there okay receipt let's see if the receipt works that's it the receipt is working as expected so all that is remaining is to take care of the calculator and the converter so and the exit is now working as well so let's take care of those double click on exit and get that sorted so let's go for the following method application okay dot exit and close open and close the brackets so the next thing is let's come to I think maybe we should also incorporate this function for the form so let's look for the event form closing let's click on this very event there and let's go for form closing right here this very one double click on that event and this we open up right there because you can see that's the method form closing so i just want to use that to prompt the user to confirm if they will want to close the system or not so that's it there the message but this message box will pop up asking the user to select yes or no if they actually want to exit the system so i'm just going to change this let's change this to job estimator job estimator job estimator right just a job estimator and then uh, it does have calculator with currency convert currency converter yeah okay and from here down here that's the lines of code that prompt the end user Okay, let's just debug and see what will happen that is it build succeed no error so run the system and let's see if we click on exit there okay so if you say yes that's what happen. so let's see if we try this the same thing happens if you say no nothing will happen try it again 
yes and that is that okay that's working as we expected the next thing we need to do now is to take care of the calculator let's take care of the calculator first but just before then remember these variables that we declare earlier on this is for the calculator i'm going to be using that then i've already used this all of these variables for the total calculation and this will be the last one that i'll be using for the currency converter so let's come in here and double click on any of those buttons for the calculator this very one or yeah let's double click on seven and what's the name okay that is uh, between seven and this one was the name of that as well let's find out the name of okay that's lbl display so double click on number seven so we're now in button seven right there so i will enter as follows enter the following lines of code if lbl display equals zero lbl display equals seven so I just copy that and double click on number eight and just change that to change the seven to eight so let's do that now for number eight double click on number eight let's try again take it, take it up double click on eight yeah there we go that's eight right there and right below it there's nine as well so paste that in there just change this to eight and repeat the same thing here now since nine is there let's take care of nine as well change the seven to nine Okay, developing calculator is very easy there's a lot of tutorial out there for calculator and let's take care of the following the rest of the buttons so let's go for button 4 so I will then speed that up and just come back to you guys show you how to take care of the operators that's button 4 paste that in there changes to, to 4 okay Okay, even the last line of code for the zero button is taken care of right there. So let's let's see. There's one more thing we need to look at. Let's look at this uh, back backspace. So the back with the backspace, we enter the following lines of code. Okay, if display this text is less than greater than zero this is what I expect the system to to do so delete one of the numbers from the display else if you click on display again it will replace the system with it will replace the display with a zero so let's try that out before we take care of the operator build that and just run it and see if we enter numbers in there whatever we can always delete as follows and if we click on delete again that's it default back to zero so that's fine okay clear button is not doing anything so if i enter this i cannot clear yet so let's take care of the clear button so exit yeah so now come in here double click on the clear button and that's the clear button there enter that and all I just need to do is uh, copy that and just paste it in there and that is the clear it will default the system back to display equals zero so that's taken care of okay now we need to take care of we need to take care of the operators before we can take care of the equal double click on the operator over there we click on the equal sign there and just enter as follows okay so what is left for me to do now is i might as well just copy this and use it for the subtraction sign now double click on subtraction and press enter and change this 
change the operator to subtraction i'll repeat the same thing for division and multiplication okay that's for division is that change this to division now take care of multiplication multiplication double click press enter place that in there and that's the multiplication taking care of so if i compile if I compile now, nothing will happen really. I can, because I need to take care of the equal sign itself. So let's do that. So double click on the equals there. Enter the following lines of code for the equals. As you can see, I'm using, I'm actually using switch statement. So whatever data is inside there. Uh, display is stored inside second number and if you select plus the first number is added to second number the result goes in here then it's then converted to string and display in the label and the same thing is repeated for multiplication subtraction and division okay so let's debug and give it a shot and see how works that's good there's no error so far so run the system enter whatever there divide and see there that's good so clear that's fine so that's working as we want now let's take care of the final piece which is the currency converter so with the currency converter, I'm going to move the cover aside and double click on this very converter there. there. That's where we are now. But just before I start with the coding of the converter, let me show you right up here. You can see, you will see the variables that I declared for the converter. That's it. And all of these countries, I will now assign value for each country. Okay, the conversion rate so let's come right down and take care of that converter now right here so just enter and enter as follows and let's take it up you can see the value that's the value for each country that i intend to use nigeria they are supposed to be the approximate exchange rate us dollar approximate exchange rate kenya the same thing brazil Canada approximate exchange rate so if you enter two pounds all you just need to do is multiply by 100.68 rupees and the same thing apply to Philippines and Indonesia so those are the exchange rate it may have it may have differ from what I have in here but you can always look that up in Google now whatever you enter in the text box the converter text box is stored inside this variable british pounds and then if you select nigerian naira nigerian naira is multiplied by british pounds which means this 302 multiplied by whatever you enter in here which is stored in British pounds is multiplied and that will give you the equivalent in Nigerian Naira the same thing applies to Kenyan shilling US dollars Canadian dollars Brazilian I don't know what it's called but I just put BRA Indian I think I don't know if it's right but I just put uh, RUP um, Philippines Okay, then the Indonesian okay and that will be the end of this currency converter so now just one or two things more let's come back in here just right in here double click on this and enter the following lines of code okay just come right down so these lines of code is to make the button visible and uh, set the combo box back to 
the choice as you see as you can see then uh, the text box just get rid of the content in the text box and the label so let me copy this and change that to false if i come back in there okay move this up and come here drag this cover it back yeah that's about fine that's about right in there just double click on it and enter the following lines of code for it okay right here let's enter as follows and just change that to force so visible if equals force yeah then so let's go to debug build the system hopefully there's no error let's see yep there's no error so let's run the program now and if i click on this there okay but i still cannot select i have nothing in here i think i need to initialize the data that should go in here okay let's take care of that right close that yeah that's working as expected yeah that's fine all right so let's exit go back into okay we just need to initialize that so let's copy this i'm going to need that to initialize the whole system so right up here yeah right here yeah, underneath here enter as follows and the next one will be that will be a bit of that items was add add as follows let's add as follows that will be for we should set it for Nigerian money yeah close that and close that then one more for let's say for US USA and so on okay so we have all of that in place okay so let's go to build and see what will happen okay that's fine no error run the program now click on this select that there so we can select us enter any amount to come that there that's it that's us select any other country Canadian that's cool it's working as we want and maybe India let me check out Nigeria why not yeah hey, that's good everything is working as expected well guys it all works as we want so we might as well just try out these other ones let's see let's combine it all together with customer discount and just click on total there that's fine so we have the customer's reference number and let's enter a name there let's say king and the surname is king paul and email is king at gmail dot com address kingston Maybe Kingston, Kingston Road. Let's make that up. Let's give it a number. Number one, Kingston Road. Telephone number. There. And date of birth first. There. So all I just need to do now is click on receipt and that is the receipt and right here you can just check this out if it works that's working that's good so everything works on this system and that is how you create your own job billing system using visual c plus plus so with that i'll just call it bye for now suppose you enjoyed the tutorial and you all have a nice day now